Cheers, mate. Ja, und hier sagt, glaube ich, im Nordosten von England, wir sind hier Newcastle Airport. Aber wir sind nicht hier, um Newcastle United zu besuchen, den Premier League Club. Sondern wir setzen uns gleich in den Zug oder vielleicht nehmen wir auch ein Auto und fahren weiter die Küste runter zu, nach Sunderland, zum AFC Sunderland. Und auch den besuchen wir eigentlich gar nicht äh, wegen der Gegenwart. Der spielt jetzt dritte Liga, äh, sondern wir besuchen ihn wegen der Vergangenheit. Und eigentlich ist es auch gar kein Besuch, sondern es ist eher so eine Art Spurensuche. Wir begeben uns auf die Suche nach Fans, die auf einem der berühmtesten Fußballfotos aller Zeiten zu sehen sind, nämlich auf diesem Bild. Und wir haben die letzten Monate damit verbracht, herauszufinden, wer diese Menschen sind, wo sie heute leben, was sie heute machen, ob sie noch Sunderland-Fans sind, ob sie dem modernen Fußball den Rücken gekehrt haben. Und wir haben zwischen 16 und 20 von ihnen tatsächlich gefunden. Aber wie viel wir treffen werden, das ist noch so ein bisschen die Wundertüte. Also was jetzt in den nächsten zwei, drei Tagen passiert, das wissen wir auch selbst noch nicht ganz genau. Ich habe übrigens am Flughafen für einen kleinen Stau gesorgt hinter mir und etwas Murren hinter mir, weil ich ähm, auf die Frage, was ich in Sunderland machen will, ähm, wahrheitsgemäß geantwortet habe. Und dann leuchteten die Augen des Polizisten auf, der meinen meine, mein Perso kontrollierte und sagte sofort, hey, I'm a Sunderland Fan! Und fing an mir zu erzählen, dass Luton Town, der morgige Gegner, äh, seinen Trainer verloren hat, der äh, den Posten bei Stoke City übernommen hat. Und ich glaube, der hätte auch noch länger geredet, aber irgendwann wurden die Leute hinter uns wirklich, hinter mir, ein bisschen, wirklich ein bisschen unruhig. Und da habe ich durchgewinkt. So ist es hier in Sunderland. When I was a student, I used to come up to the northeast and I stayed in that house and I could see the floodlights there. And uh, and then I think I was thinking, should football be a subject for it? It's not serious enough, you know, you've got to do something more serious, but keep an eye on the football. But then all these disasters were happening in yeah. the 80s that, yeah. that culminated in the hills. And I thought, my subject is staring me in the face. What is more serious than this? The thing that obsesses the nation, half the nation goes to the matches, and now it's about to have this complete transformation. So I was in the right place all along, just a bit too, a bit too early. So I hit the ground running with Sunderland. It was a ground I had a great affinity for, you know, um, and the people. And so I think the looking up picture was it's not an easy picture to take, but I kind of knew that day. I spent 45 minutes just looking at this crowd, thinking there is something special about this crowd. All I probably need now is the right moment, you okay. know. And I, I was the, the the match was going on behind me, so I had my back to the match, and the fans all in front of me, and they forget about me. They're just not interested in me. And I'm looking along that line, looking along that line, and then at that moment, I took one picture of that exact moment. And that was that photo. And you know, I, I, you don't get to see what you've got in these old yeah. cameras. You know, you've not, got to yeah. wait for the postman for a week later or whatever. But I knew I had it. I just knew that at that moment, everybody's eyes were open. There wasn't somebody going, you know, everyone's eyes were open and they were all attentive. And there was something interesting, which we think, we think was the ball spinning round with 20 players in the goal mouth. Yeah. That's why a few eyes are looking in different directions. They're not absolutely all on the same thing but they're all up in the air in wonder um, or it was a spaceship landing I remember what happened in the photo. I remember the game was against Coventry City. Uh, well, someone won 1-0 and Steve Agnew scored the winner. 
And I believe the photo with the ball was up in the air and everybody was sort of glancing up to see. And I think September time, I think, when the photo was. But other than that, I'll, my memory's not too good of it. Do you remember anything from that game, from the day? I told, I told. Um, I said, I know when we were playing Coventry and we won, which was unusual for that season, but uh, I, just, I, I can't remember a thing about it. Don't remember the photo being taken or, or anything else. Um, please, we won, though. And the photo. Mm -hmm. um, when did you become aware of, you know, that people know the photo? Oh, it's a special photo. Where they, yeah. Um, people started talking about it. Probably maybe, two, I think it was into 2000s, maybe 2004, 2005. Um, I think a, a friend of ours um, was in the lakes and she saw it in a book and she messaged and said, oh, Lisa, you're on this picture. And I'm like, oh, yes. And then every so often it will come up, um, whether it will be, I think it's in the um, football museum in Manchester and there'll be something and, and often on social media, people will say, oh, that's you, isn't it? You and Lynn. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, so it's really good every few years. It sort of pops up and it's really good. And something like this, obviously, is fantastic. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. It was, uh, you, you almost were on the cover of Lequip. Uh, <laughs> I think they cut you off, right? Wow. Uh, oh, I'd, uh, yeah. Um, the image was on the, on the Lequip. Right, cover. okay. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware of that until I saw it, so yeah. But uh, it, it, amazing, yeah. It's, it's fantastic. I think the photo, like you said, it is so special because a lot of people are just looking, you can see all the emotion in the faces and everything. And you know, with football, everybody gets so wound up and you get so invested and everything. So yeah, it's, it's really cool. <coughs> Do people often ask you something about the photo? It's come up a few times, yeah. I mean, I first came to know about it probably when I was about 19, 18, 19, and a friend had seen it in Ambleside at the Football Museum there, and she was like, I've seen you on a postcard, and I didn't know anything about it, and she sent me the postcard, and from then on, it's kind of cropped up a few times on Facebook, and Stuart invited me to the opening of the exhibition at the National Football Museum about four years ago and that was the kind of first time I'd met Stuart and um, and yeah then this has happened and I think it's going to keep recurring with it being such a famous photo so yeah. And uh, you now live in Manchester right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Where the museum is. Yeah. And, uh, and the, uh, the photo was chosen for the poster right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's right, there's a big picture of it outside the museum. I was, my parents came to visit a few weeks ago and we were just walking past and there I was in a, on a big picture outside the museum. So yeah, it's nice to, to see. Exactly. I so mean, I know. I, I think. Here, right? I think we should go and sit in the people's house in their sofa and say, "This is where this picture was taken." I think it was just over there because the ground ran in this strange diagonal diagonal direction down there, so it kind of went across there. So all the crowd would have been from sort of this corner going that way. So I reckon that house there in the middle is about where those people were stood, and. It, I think it's a bit sad that all that is, is left of a hundred and something years history is a few names and they think that's enough. Turnstile Muse and Paddock End. Midfield and Drive. I think it's a bit sad. Yeah. It's, I mean, the new ground is it's, it's good, it's nice, but I mean, you've got the sea and everything. Um, the new ground has to be full. Even today, yeah. 30,000. It will still look, it will look half empty and you'll notice red seats that have faded and things. The thing with the old ground, it didn't need to be full. It was full of history and odd dark corners and things. You know, as a fan, as a photographer, probably not a player, you just play the match. But I think that you, you, could, you could much be happier at Roker Park with it not full because you, you, everything that's happened there in their history has happened at that ground. Now you go to the new one, and you're expecting success or a 
full ground yeah. and is neither. And the terraces have gone, have disappeared. Terraces, and you're sat next to somebody's moaning, you know, probably, as a fan, you know, is yeah. moaning you ahead. Can't of, you can't move away. You, you can't move away. You're so stuck with them for the rest the, of the season. In our beautiful picture, you could have just gone, I'll go here and, you know, leave them. You can't do that now. Yeah. I think the atmosphere was better when you could stand um, and I, I understand why they changed it for safety reasons absolutely and, but it was always fine it never felt too crowded too cramped and we used to go maybe 15 minutes before but we always used to manage to get our little slot to you know behind the goal to the left um, but no I always found it fine absolutely it never felt sort of yeah you know dangerous or anything and the atmosphere was amazing and you can jump around a lot easier um, when you're standing than in the seats <laughs> you know I remember lots of jumping around when we scored and it was fantastic so yeah really really good even though the football wasn't particularly good and you know it was a, it was a good it was a good ground to watch football at it was everything was enjoyable it was do you miss it yes I do the, the, the atmosphere is not the same on the new ground like it, it's, um, you said you're not going as often as you used to, also because of you know family and jobs and things like that. But do you think you would go more regularly if they were still playing at Rocket Park? Yeah, uh, it's difficult to see. I would certainly try. I think, but as it's no longer there, it's it's very hard to uh, make a decision one way or the other. Um, But I would, I would love to be able to go back once more. Certainly, if there was an opportunity or somehow, like I know it's impossible, but so you miss Rocker Park? Oh, I doubt. I, I'd go back to Rocker Park now. I'd, I'd sort it easy. Um, it was just a fantastic place to go um, and watch football. No matter how bad the team was doing, I always used to love going to Rocker Park and watching the game. Um, it was just an amazing place. Amazing place. How, how many games did you see here? Yeah, um, I saw 25 games as, as a photographer. Uh, I saw more at Highbury and I saw more at uh, Vicarage Road and Watford and a few other grounds. But I think this was, I felt like I could never get a bad picture here. It is very strange. I, I wasn't truly a, new, a Sunderland supporter, but I felt I could do, you know, I could just go like that, click, and it would be a wonderful picture. Um, it was very photogenic, and I can only think that it's it's the colours, the red and white stripes. But then other clubs have got red and white stripes, like Southampton, and Stoke, or you know other clubs abroad, even in in Europe. And I think it's the loyalty of, of, of a, a club that's never really won anything. You know, I think that they always have that sense of. We are Sunderland, we haven't got much else to be honest in the whole city. It's not the prettiest city, they'll say that. But we have got this football club that goes back forever. And apart from winning the FA Cup and a few titles in the early 1900s, one day, one day, we might, we might do it again. But I don't think they live to win everything. They just want to be part, you know. There's a great sense of togetherness in that picture. That's what everyone says about it. Even fans from other clubs says, it is peculiarly inclusive. Everybody looks quite relaxed. The boy is gripping the front railing, not because he's gonna be crushed or he wants to jump over or anything like that. It's just, he's excited and he feels quite comfortable. Everyone, all the layers back to the back, look like they're meant to be there. And they've all got red and white stripes and the railing is red and white. It's, it's just a beautiful yeah, picture. How many? Football's always been part of my life, it's part of my family. Um, I've played football since I was little, um, played for Sunderland Girls, played for captain of my university football team, played for Sheffield FC, the oldest club in the world. Um, yeah, my parents, their honeymoon was the 1973 FA Cup final where Sunderland won the FA Cup, a historic moment for the team. And yeah, um, it's a big part of my family. It's always going to be uh, my son, who's five. He's just attended his first game on Boxing Day and he's going to grow up to be a Sunderland fan, I'm sure. <laughs> Poor thing, but <laughs> it's, um, 
it's a brilliant club. It's has it ups, ups and downs, but um, yeah, we love it. I was there for a different reason. I was up to photograph coal mining and stuff, and I was looking across at the football thinking, I love it, but it, it can't become my main subject. You know, there's more serious things in life. And boy, did it become the most important thing. I can't think of anything more valuable to our nation, Britain, and maybe Europe and the whole world than something that's built around a round shape, you know, that, that kind of connects us all. It, it, you know, the value of football is the gathering, the letting off steam, the emotion. It isn't just a simple pleasurable pastime. And in Germany, England, Holland, there's a fair bit of suffering in Scotland, you know, suffering for your team. Maybe Dortmund have won quite a lot, but we keep saying Sunderland have never won much at all. Es war ein raues und windiges Wochenende, so ist der Nordosten. Es war aber auch ein tolles Fußballwochenende. Mit vielen Namen, Eindrücken, Geschichten zwischendurch hatte ich echt Schwierigkeiten, allen Namen zu folgen, aber ich glaube, ich habe sie auf der Pfanne. Wir haben sechs Fans getroffen, mehr als ich gedacht hatte eigentlich. Wir haben Stuart getroffen, das war super. Und fast noch besser, ich glaube, wir kennen inzwischen 25 Leute, die auf diesem Foto sind. Und wir haben Stuart schon dazu gebracht, dass er überlegt, es zum 25-jährigen Jubiläum nachzustellen, das wäre in zwei Jahren. Und vor allen Dingen, was, was glaube ich am besten, was am meisten hängen bleibt, ist das. Wir haben gedacht, viele von denen, oder zumindest ein kleiner Teil, würde sagen, Nee, ich gehe nicht mehr zum Fußball, Sunderland interessiert mich nicht mehr, der moderne Fußball gibt mir nichts, ich mag die Premier League nicht, all das Geld und die... Aber eigentlich nicht. Eigentlich sind sie immer alle noch mit tiefstem Herzen Sunderland-Fans und hier gilt, glaube ich, tatsächlich Sunderland till I die.